they call it kind of edgy. Edgy. Sorry, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on television, on Comcast Channel 99, and rebroadcast on WMGJ Radio. This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolles? Here. Councilman Williams? Here. Worthy? Here. Eccles? Here. Billingsley? Here. Cannon? Here. And Reed? Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Brian Harbison to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for our health. We thank you for uh, watching over us, watching over our city. We just pray that you'll continue to, to keep us safe, keep our focus on you, continue to be with the, the mayor and his administration and this council today with the decisions they have to make. Thank you for the sacrifices that these civil servants make each day. Pray that you'll be with our first responders, that you'll protect them wherever they are. That you'll just wrap your arms around them. We ask your protection around our children, in the schools. We promise to give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Are you warm? The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and city council meeting held on August 21st. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of August 17th through 23rd. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor. I'm finished business. Uh, item number 8A is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 129 East Walnut Street in District 4. Jerry Van Klein and wife Edith Sue Klein being the last known owners. This resolution was tabled for 30 days on July 24th. What is the pledge of the council? Uh, I had to add in there thing from them, so. Okay. Second. Okay, any additional discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. This is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 1601 Robert Street in District 1. Anthony Haley, subject to mortgage in of Regents being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the building department. This case involves a burn structure. We filed it in June of this year. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate the nuisance. Okay. 
What is the pleasure of the council? I move to abate. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 1807 Mount Zion Avenue in District 5, State of Alabama, rights of redemption of Joel T. Smith and or his heirs if deceased, subject to a mortgage in favor of South Trust Bank of Etowah being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, this case also involves a burn house. We filed it in June. There have been no improvements, so there are no permits, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. What is the pleasure of the council? I move that we abate the nuisance. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution assessing nuisance abatement lien for demolition on property located at 2215 East Tuscaloosa Avenue in District 7, Wade and Glenda Taylor being the last known owners. The amount is 2000 $791.40. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Move to adopt. Second. Okay, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearings are resolutions assessing nuisance abatement liens against property for grass cutting work that has already been performed. No council action is needed for 1126 Steelman Avenue, and this is item B on your agenda, because the charges have been paid by the owner. We have four remaining locations to consider. 1579 Litchfield Avenue in District 1, $256. 535 Hillier Street in District 3, $316. 627 Spring Street, also in District 3, $256. And 3322 Madison Avenue in District 6, $196. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to any of these resolutions? Ma'am, if you'll come to the microphone and state your name and address, please. Um, my name's Ashley Yellen, and I stay at 3322 Madison Avenue, where it's charged for 196 and I'd like to know, like, when was it cut? Because I pay somebody to cut my grass all the time. So, I don't know how I got that charge. Okay. Have you spoken to anyone at City Hall yet before this no. meeting? No. Um, this was my first letter that I got, and I got it just the other day saying for me to come to court today at 11. Okay. So, I didn't even know it was going to be like this. Okay. And there's no date, no cut date in that letter? Um, <coughs> no, sir. You can look at it if you want. Okay. No, I'm okay. I, I asked that only because I, I wasn't sure. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Since there's some confusion, Mr. President, on 3322 Madison Avenue, I would like to ask for a table on this one for seven days till we can see if the building department or whoever can bring us some kind of stuff where they cut that, please. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? All righty. Those in favor uh, to table the resolution on item E for seven days, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, 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 those opposed? Motion carries to table for seven days. All right. If, so uh, 
in that period of seven days next week, if they can't prove us, if they can't prove that they've cut that with some pictures or something, I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that, please, next week. And while we're on this point, I'd like to ask the attorney: Is it possible? We've talked about it as a council before about picture taking. That uh, and I don't know what a problem that would be, but could there be an ordin an ordinance where public work, whenever they cut grass, pictures are taken and dated so that we would know. So when they come up here, we can say, uh, well, we cut this on such and such a day. Do we have to do an ordinance for that? Uh, you don't have to do an ordinance. Uh, actually, y'all are the trier of fact, kind of like a judge. And given any particular case, that's the reason we have this public hearing, in any particular case, if you feel like the, the, the city, for example, has, has not submitted sufficient proof to, to warrant the lien, then you don't have to approve the lien. And if, uh, you know, so whenever there's any questions and if you think that uh, lack of a picture is key for part of the evidence in your, in your mind as a decision maker, then, then uh, that's in, in your realm. Well, I know all of us have talked, talked about it, and I don't know how difficult it is, but that's documentation, and I just believe in documentation, and that's our evidence. So, um, yeah, what, yeah, what I would, what I was. Take care of that. Uh, Matt, don't cut your mic on me. They don't, they don't know it yet, but I'm proposing, like I tried to do this past year, and it's never been done. Uh, I want a crew in the same district every week and they can take pictures. It's not that hard to do that. And I don't know why it's not done, but there'll be a meeting here pretty quick about that. Because okay. we can have a crew in each district where we have the most grass cut every week. Yeah, you won't, you won't get any objection from any of us there. I know, no. me either. Now, <laughs> one, one, thing, one thing I think we should add is I'm, again, um, I think it's important not just for the individual that's uh, disputing it, but from the standpoint of the public works group and city employees protecting themselves, I'm more of a proponent, proponent of a couple things. One, video footage uh, that shows the cut after it's completed. Uh, and then secondly, uh, a date and time stamp from an atomic clock, uh, because obviously you can manipulate uh, the date and time stamp on, uh, on, 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 on a number of video cameras because those are analog dates and times, but an atomic clock you can't manipulate. So again, I would, if we could just consider that from a, from a proof perspective so that it can't be disputed uh, because people will try to play games with that. Right. And, uh, and so backing them into a corner, I think is, is what, I'm, what I'm more interested in and making sure that we proof it the right way. So. If the city just would have had a, have a regular picture of before and after, it won't be a problem. I'm not worried about all them clocks and all that stamps, but if, you know, uh, like before. So just do a picture and I know you, Polaroids, they're gonna come back, but you can do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> everybody got cell phones, you know, these smartphones. They know how to manipulate them. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That, that's but I'm talking concern. about the city workers. That's yeah. all we need from, I'm not worried about everybody else, just the city workers. That's, that's just the suggestion. You actually would, wouldn't have to have a city worker. Right. You just have the supervisor go by there. He lines that's them up right. every morning where to cut. That's right. And the Pretty supervisor that's should right. be responsible for taking the before picture and the after picture itself. That's right. Yeah, that's right. In the date and time right on the picture when you take it. So that's that right. We, we right. started doing that a couple of years ago when they uh, was going to tear our house down. Because we had a couple of said, so, well, I had all my stuff, and there was no way of proving it, no way of disproving it. So we started taking pictures of the inside before we tore one down. Yep. Okay. All right. So that leaves us with three locations to consider. What is the pleasure of the council? I move that we uh, adopt the A, B, C, D, and a, B, C, and D. No, A, C. Actually, A, C, and D. A, C, D. A, C, D. I move that we, are, we adopt those. Uh, okay. Second. All right, we have a motion to adopt those remaining three um, locations and, and second. Is there any discussion? Second. All right, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt all three resolutions, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt all three.
This is the time and place is advertised to provide an opportunity for public comment regarding the City of Gadsden's application for a grant through the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program for FY 2018 local solicitation. The amount is three thousand. I'm sorry, thirty-two thousand four hundred seventy-six dollars, and the proposed use of funds is for the purchase of dive equipment for members of the gas and police department's dive team that is affiliated with the Etowah County Dive Unit. The Etowah County Sheriff's Department has declined any funding from the grant and the City of Gaston Police Department will receive the total amount of the allocation. The application was approved by the City Council on August 21st, 2018 and a 30-day review is required. On an agreement between the Sheriff's Office and the Police Department was also approved by the City Council on August 21st. Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this, uh, this item? And again, this is a public comment period. Is there anyone who'd like to speak regarding this item? Okay. The Police Department will submit an update to the, to the Justice Department to complete the grant requirements. Okay, so no additional action is required as I understand it. Okay, item number 14, our next public hearing is a resolution approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license bar at Venue LLC located at 201 George Wallace Drive in District 4 has applied for a special retail more than 30 days license. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license. Books a Million, Inc., located at 1001 Rainbow Drive in District 4, has applied for a retail beer and table wine license on or off premises. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, is anyone out there from books of me and Mike could discuss this with us. You'll come on up. My name is Bo Bishop. I'm the vice president of food and beverage for books a million. Okay. Is there any questions specifically or would you just like kind of the outline of our plan? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, as you're all aware, retail environment uh, is very challenging these days. And so we were looking for ways to differentiate ourselves from other retailers, other bookstores, and so we feel like offering beer and wine in our existing cafe is one of those ways that we can be different. Initially, it's a test. Um, we're doing it in Gaston to test it. It's not something we've rolled out company-wide. We're uh, going to use limited offerings, about five offerings of beer and wine. We'll be featuring Gadsden's uh, Back 40 uh, craft beer as our test, and we just want to see if it's something our customers would be interested in. We're not trying to get into the, the bar business. We're not trying to, uh, you know, convert anything that we're not. We're just hoping to take some of our existing customers, our existing cafe customers, and when they're not interested in buying a, a coffee in the evening, maybe a glass of wine or a, a craft beer would be something they would be interested in. Are you talking about in-house or are you talking about takeout? No, sir. It or would both. strictly be inside the cafe. Our, our license would only allow us inside the, uh, the bookstore. Okay. Okay. Have you tested this concept in any other markets? No, sir. This is actually our first test. Wow. Gadsden is our number one uh, volume cafe, so we felt like it was a good way to test it and see if it's something our customers would be interested in. Okay. Great. You know, this bookstore is more of a family type deal. Uh, what, what requirements and rules would you have to uh, not have minors and stuff involved with Yes, sir. Well, we, uh, we will have uh, training. That's, uh, we do a training program that's through the state, through the ABC board. So all of our uh, people who will be serving will be trained on how to uh, check an ID, uh, how many drinks someone would be allowed before they would be cut off. Again, we're not interested in becoming a bar. We're not interested in trying to increase our revenue by bar sales. We're just simply using this as a complement 
to our existing offerings and hoping that a guest who would come in and uh, maybe you know buy a book and leave may stay for a little while and maybe have incremental sales as a result. And you know, any, anytime you have anything, you're going to always have a couple of people that's going to test the limits of it. Yes, so sir. That's what I was worried about more than anything. Well, and I think the training there with our staff will be most important. I mean, we're going to follow the line of what ABC recommends, and we're going to overtrain. And we're not, we've already created some situations where we're going to have a limit of cutoff at two drinks. We're, again, I don't want to be a bar. We're not going to do a happy hour. We're not going to stay open late. We're simply going to offer local beverages to someone who might be interested in in partaking but by no means are we going to try to compete or be a bar your uh, cafe is near the uh children's section uh yes ma'am it is located the, the cafe's at the front entrance of the mall so the, the kids section's kind of to the side of it yes ma'am so how is that going because that's going to be where children when i say that's uh that's going to be a premise where children come in so is that still okay, attorney? Oh, it's not against the law. It's not okay. against any ordinance or regulation by the state. Yeah. Um, I, I guess what we, I guess, I guess what we I, would ask. Yeah. Just yeah. move it, move it. If, can you do that? Yes, sir, we can certainly look at relaying the store. And, and again, yeah. the goal is for this not to be a place that's going to be ruckus or or loud or have any kind of influence on minors or anything like that. We're simply just trying to have an offering there available for someone. We're not going to advertise it. You know, we're not going to have signs in the window that says, uh, you know, beer or anything like that. It's simply an offering that's available to a customer that might be interested. Yeah, I, I guess a, a suggestion, and again, this is all, this is just us asking. Sure. A suggestion I might have is to use shelving to petition off the children's section from okay. some of that activity just to of a, a, allow for a clear separation um, but but again I, I think the concept is interesting at the very least and uh, you know good luck well, I appreciate that and again we're, this is a test where we just we're looking at our customers to see if it's something they would be interested in and you know after the, the results of this test it might be something we roll out more extensively or it may be something that we tried and didn't work okay all right, all right I've got I've got one question yeah uh, on your application it's it's for both on and off premises which is unusual uh, and i think that's the question that was asking is you know on premises is what you described yes but the license you've applied for with the state uh, and you're wanting us to prove is both on and off premises yes i, I don't the, the license was not filed by me personally so i'm not don't know all the specific details of the license but our intention is not to sell alcohol outside of the premise so an off-premise license would not be necessary well, I tell you, our alcohol laws in Alabama are very confusing. Yes, sir, I'm aware of this. <laughs> They're very confusing. Okay, that's. Uh, I think that was something that was a question a lot of council people's minds was, you know, about the off premises as well. So your intention is not to sell wine to go. No, to sir. Go. Wine or no beer and wine strictly consumed on premise. Gotcha. Lee, will they have to amend the application? They don't. They don't have to. I mean, you can have an on and off premises license and not sell off premises. Okay. But if your intention is to only sell on premises, I mean, we, you know, certainly they can go through and attend it. And we that's restrict that. them yeah. as so a count. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion. Restricted to strictly on premise. That's, that's, that is up to you. Okay. That's all right. I think that's what we will be after. Okay. 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 So, all right. Thank you. Okay, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Strictly on premises, consent. Uh, since he explained it, I think we can go on the board on it. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a pub, it's a pub, uh, it's a pub of hearing. I would, I would buy the yeah. extra time for me. One way a week? Well, give her time, a uh, table of 10 days or whatever a week. Would give her time to get this changed we on table premises only. For the next you don't, week. Well, you don't have to table. It's a public hearing today. It's we a just, public hearing today. Can we just pass the public hearing? We'll just consider it and next pass week. Pass it next yeah. week. Next week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, so you'll defer uh, the consideration until yeah. next meeting. Yep. So, so when I when I ask what is the pleasure of the council, you'll say what you'll say what she said. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll defer consideration until I think the, the wishes. I move to adopt whatever I would say. <laughs>
I second that. <laughs> Very good. We'll, we'll confer actual consideration of this resolution until next week. Uh, whoa. All right. Item number 16, our next public hearing is a resolution approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license, Longhorn Steakhouse, located at 943 Rainbow Drive in District 4, has applied for a restaurant retail liquor license. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? I I can't get away from this without just commenting on Buster Porch's face when he uh, when we brought up that uh, books of millions. Uh, Y'all should. I mean, it's classic. <laughs> you should. It was classic. The look on his face. He, but uh, I don't think very many people missed that. So. <laughs> All right. Clerk, will you take? Uh, I'm sorry. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Yeah, I, I, again, I think he responded the way we did upstairs. All of us were kind of just taken by that. So, so it, it'll be interesting to, to, to see how that turns out. <laughs> just say it like I said it. I was, who going to go buy book and drink? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> That's the, that, that, was my, that was my that was my that was my question. So I got my answer. A lot of people will. <laughs> All right. It's a test. That's right. It's a test mark. That's right. Yeah, test mark. Our final public hearing is a resolution approving issuance of an alcoholic beverage license, Tea Time Golf and Grill, located at 3639 South 11th Street in District Six, has applied for a restaurant retail liquor license. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt. Second. Okay, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, <laughs> let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item number 18 is a resolution awarding bid number 3389 for crushed stone. The NEAPA coordinator has recommended awarding the bid to Vulcan Construction Materials, LLC. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item number 19 is a resolution authorizing participation in senior nutrition program and grant. This is to continue the city's program to provide meals to eligible seniors. The amount is $114,442 and the locations are Elliott Community Center and Carver Community Center. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. New business, is there any new business? Department reports, <coughs> boards, committees. All right, remarks by the mayor and council. Mayor? Okay. okay. I would just like to uh, thank my constituents uh, for your support and um, looking forward to working with everyone for the next years to come. All right. Mr. Eccles. <clears throat> I can't believe a few people went to the polls and voted yesterday. We've got a great city, and if somebody not paying any attention to how great it is, you need to turn out and vote in my opinion, you should keep the present administration. We have done a great job, in my opinion, of mixing the black and white and working together. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to be busting in little groups all over town. Look at what's happening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Eccles. 
Councilman Worthy. Yes, Mr. President. I just want to say thank you to District 3 for trusting me to give me four more years uh, on this council. And I will continue to work on your behalf and not my behalf, but on the people's behalf. And I would like to say uh, something to this gorgeous lady that's sitting out here in the audience. And I don't want y'all to tell my wife. Uh, my campaign manager, I want you to stand up because without her and the good Lord, none of this would be possible. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Councilman Billings? I don't have anything. Okay. Councilman Cannon? I just want to do want to thank the people in District 6 for re-electing me for another four years. Uh, it was a good election. Uh, we need to get more people to turn out this next time. We didn't have it about probably around 30%. And surely there's enough people in gas inside these 30% that cares about the city. We need to make sure we can get them out and vote. No matter who you vote for, just get out and vote. We need at least to have 50% of the people in gas to vote. There's no reason we shouldn't have that amount. Uh, I want to tell everybody that I appreciate the people that uh, took my signs up without my permission in Alabama <laughs> City and Walnut Park. Those signs were 12 years old, and when you put the stakes in the ground, they broke. So, you know, when you stole those 100-plus signs that you got, you didn't really get nothing. If you had just asked me, I'd probably gave them to you. Uh, but since I'm off that story, I do want to say we're going to give every candidate a couple of days before we pick up their signs. If you're not in a runoff, and you know who's in the runoff, if you're not going to be in the runoff, we expect all your signs to be taken up in the next couple of days. And if they're not taken up, Public Works will get them for you, and they'll be out at Burns Park. That's all I got. All right. Thank you. I think if you'll go up here to the shooting range on Miles Holler Road, you'll find most of your signs. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. I really appreciate them taking them up because that's one less job the well, sign good. committee had. They to make do. beautiful yard sale signs. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank my folks for the ones that came out and voted for me. Uh, I thought that was great. Uh, to the people who worked for me door to door three times around for a month. Big thank you because without them going door to door as close as it was, you never know what was going to happen. Uh, but I got to say something about what Bob said. I don't think people care anymore or they're confused. I got calls last night after the election wanting to know when the election was. And to the lady I hung up on the fifth time, you know, it was yesterday. And last night at 8.30 was a little bit late to be calling me about voting. Okay. Uh, next time, my wife said, why don't we get stickers like you get a voter sticker, and every time you go door to door, give them a sticker, stick it on their head or on a calendar somewhere, and so they'll know when the runoff is, I mean, when the election is. Okay. And that didn't sound like a bad idea to me. Uh, and to the uh, local newspaper, I must say, I got a call from my son in San Antonio who said, uh, I've been reading the paper. He said, I never did see when the election was going to be. Well, you would think that your local papers would have been saying, hey, the 28th of November, we're going to have an election. The mayor's like, the day before, something. Didn't hear a word. I don't know what the problem is, Michael. Excuse me. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the mix-up is. But that needs to be rectified on October the 9th. Am I correct in the runoff? Surely to goodness, on the eighth day of October, our local newspaper can print that so people can see it. And our radio stations can do the same thing, please. You know, the most uninformed, people who are uninformed have really got a problem because they normally won't tell a lie. They believe it. But if you inform people, they know what to do. They're going to be straight and go for it. So please, if you would, I'd appreciate it. That's all I got. That's Thank a negative, you. but I did want to say it. Thank you, Councilman Reed. I, you know, I will never miss an opportunity to disagree with you in public, and so I won't miss this one. Uh, hey, it, was, <laughs> it was. Uh, I'll get rebuttal. It, it was. Uh, it was indeed uh, in in print. I I saw it. I mean, it was it was there. I, you know, maybe maybe it wasn't in. Where was print. it? Was it 
What's that? Yeah, maybe it wasn't in bold print, but uh, in several articles leading up to, I saw it. Yeah. So that's yeah. just, and I Probably know. Why it, I don't take the paper? Yeah. I read it. Of course, then you wouldn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> I slip around and read my neighbor. You got. You gonna have to hold your paper right side up. I think that's that's that. I think that might be the issue. Um, what I'll say is, uh, again, thank you. I'm, I, I couldn't be more honored and, and humble um, to be, you know, granted not just one opportunity, but a third opportunity to, to represent the people of District 2. Um, I, we've got some amazing people in District 2. They're very, very, very informed. Um, and I, I said that in my first election. I think if you if you give them the truth and entrust them with the truth, they'll make informed decisions. And um, and so the people that support, we're, we're pretty consistent in District Two. Uh, you know, the numbers indicate that there were 670 people that voted in 2014, and that number bumped up by an even 20 this time. 690 um, came out and voted this time. Now again, I'm not necessarily excited by the turnout because there are a lot more registered voters uh, than that number but but uh, but there is improvement I guess you have to call out improvement where you can get it but uh, but I do p appreciate those who did come out and vote uh, coming out and supporting us and and I want to publicly thank the people you know and councilman Cannon I think you're spot on I want to publicly thank the people that uh, that went out and support these I'm no I'm no fool this uh, you know, this process is not so much about the candidate. There are people out there that get out there and work their behinds off to support candidates that get out and knock on doors and engage. And, and, uh, and I was the benefit factor, I think, of uh, a handful of folks, folks who cast a pretty wide net. And that helps me, that helps me significantly. So I really, really appreciate that. And uh, I'm excited. We, we've got some great things uh, that we're going to continue to work on and work for uh, over the next four years. Um, and I'll also echo Mr. Echols' sentiment. Um, we, we don't need the negativity. Um, I make a very deliberate effort in not mentioning the names or even referring to my opponents. I think you run on your record, you run on your credentials, you run on issues, but you don't engage in a lot of this character, these character attacks that you, that you hear. And it's just, it's sad. Um, and, you know, we, whether we're proud of it or not, we've earned a name for ourselves in the state of Alabama for some of the ugliest politics in the state, I mean, in the country. Um, and some people may be proud of that. Some people like that. But I hate it. I hate it. And again, I'll say what I've said all along. I think we at some point need to pass a resolution that requires that candidates campaign in one spot. Let's find a central spot in the city, and they put signs up in one spot. I'm sick of seeing political signs. So I think they ought to campaign in one spot. Everybody ought to go to that one spot and have to campaign. And I'm done with that. I'm, I'm done with that one. Uh, I do have a couple of additional announcements. Due to the Labor Day holiday, uh, next Monday's garbage route will be collected on Tuesday, and Tuesday's route will be collected on Wednesday. Uh, and Thursday and Friday's, Friday's routes will not change. Also, as a reminder, and Ivy, you correct me if, I'm, if, I, if I get this wrong, but also as a reminder as it relates to next week's council meeting, uh, there will be a time change. We'll be meeting on Tuesday. Um, yes. But... The pre-council meeting will be at 11 o'clock, and the council meeting will be at noon. Okay, so we'll shift back an hour. So our work session will be at 11 upstairs, and the actual council meeting will be at uh, 12 p.m. Okay? So does that mean we have lunch at 1? <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, do you care to explain the, the why behind that? Yes, sir, Mr. President. The state law specifies that the election results are canvassed beginning at noon. So that's why we make that adjustment. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Good. All right. If there's nothing else, I entertain a motion that we adjourn. So move. All right. Next, next, next.